This is an antique computer that has a little personal significance to me. My dad bought one of these brand new in the mid-1980s. This is a Zenith Data Systems ZF-152-42 IBM Personal Computer Clone. This thing would be about equivalent to an IBM PC or probably the later XT. It would also be a good deal faster given that it uses an Intel 8088 processor clocked at 8 megahertz. Anyway, this was made by the same Zenith that manufactured televisions and radios. They branched out into computers for a while and were moderately successful, although the division supposedly never made them much money, and eventually they sold it to the French. But before they did, they made computers under their own name around the time that they acquired the Heath Company. Now this computer was available pre-assembled or as a kit. And this particular model was just like the one that my dad had back in the day. His began life with the two 360 kilobyte, five and a quarter inch floppy drives that this one has. A little later on, he added a Seagate ST 225 or 251, I don't remember which, hard drive to the machine, as well as a fax card. And I can well remember going down into the basement in the early 90s and firing his computer up and turning on the fax program so that he could receive faxes throughout the day. It is my intention at some point to add a hard drive to this machine. I'm not for sure how common these machines are, but it doesn't seem they're especially rare. And I wanted to find another one. His disappeared in a great basement flood of 1994. And then someone left one on my doorstep complete with CRT monitor and an installed hard drive. That one disappeared in the basement flood of 2004. It was safely up and out of the way, and I should have seen to it that it was kept because it never got wet, but unfortunately it slipped right through my hands. This machine, which I will be taking great pains to keep out of trouble and to keep it from disappearing, is an eBay find. And I actually found a couple of these being offered. This one was the cheapest option. Although I suppose that as time goes by they can only get more expensive, which is another good argument for keeping this one in as good a shape as I can. It looks pretty good for its age. It's got a few scuffs in the paint, a few scrapes. And somebody, probably the previous owner, wasn't too bothered about putting all the cover screws back in place. It's hard to do one-handed. There we go. So I had to go to the hardware store and get a packet of screws. They're not exact matches to what was in the machine, but they are compatible with the threads. And after a little bit of spray paint to make their heads black, nobody will ever know the difference. What you've got in here is an 8-bit ISA bus on a backplane board. There's the power supply over there, and the label has actually fallen off the power supply. It's hiding over here. CAUTION! Do not remove this power supply cover under any circumstances. There are no serviceable components inside. Woohoo! Well, somewhere in here, I think there was also a set of ratings for the power supply. It's my intention, when I go ahead and restore this machine, to go ahead and glue those things back into their proper place. There's the power supply ratings. I can just see them under the backplane board. Hopefully I can shake them out. Anyway, you have the power connector going to the backplane board. You have a series of LEDs next to it. And then the first three ISA slots are actually some kind of special purpose affair. These two make up the entire functioning computer. This one over here is the processor board, which has the keyboard controller, and I believe it also has the parallel port on it. And this one over here is the video, serial, and floppy disk controller board. This thing's video is of the CGA type. And then over here is another one of these tall slots that doesn't have anything in it. And I don't know if Zenith Data Systems ever marketed anything that went into that slot or not. You can see, if you look at these boards, that this machine has some history as a kit. It was offered as a kit that the end user could buy at a slightly lower price and assemble, assemble themselves. As you can see, there is definitely some rework on this board. This is a pre-assembled version, but both boards have a pretty fair amount of rework on them. And in the case of the processor board, there's a ROM chip here. You can see it's standing up taller than all the others that has several interposers plugged into it. And I don't know if that's some sort of a, a workaround for some kind of an engineering fault or if that's some sort of a way to insert just a little bit more delay to work with the device properly, i.e. to circumvent a hardware bug, but whatever it is, it's definitely there. 
up front there's a power LED right in there. The power supply pulls air in through here and blows it across the boards in the machine. As I said earlier, it's my intention at some point to add a hard drive controller to this. You can see that whoever didn't put the screws back either hastily borrowed some option cards or borrowed the slot blanks. Fortunately, I have a big box of those things, so restoring this thing to its previous condition and restoring the proper path of airflow through it won't be a problem. Going around to the back, there's the parallel port, keyboard port, which is wired for XT operation. This is a speed switch between 4.77 and 8 megahertz, which is used for speed sensitive software. There's a 25 pin serial port. There's the CGA video output. And then there's a composite video output. And this is very interesting because this is for a monochrome monitor only. Now I always thought that maybe it carried color data anyway, but apparently it doesn't. And it also doesn't seem to carry true single channel data either, i.e. everything, if you plug the color display into it, everything would show up in one of the three colors, either red, green, or blue. Instead, this thing actually outputs paper white video. And I'm not sure what was done in the logic to accomplish that, but it's kind of a neat idea. So it truly is a monochrome only connector. On the video board, there are some connections for a light pen, which was probably offered as an option. And then there's a set of solder pads right here that says internal monitor. I don't know if Zenith ever offered this particular system packaged such that it would have had an internal monitor, but clearly they were thinking of it. There's the FCC ID sticker, and way down at the bottom in small print it says Heath Company, Benton Harbor, Michigan, because Zenith got into the computer business by purchasing the Heath Company, of course. So let's throw the cover back on this thing and take it for a little bit of a spin. All right, I've got everything set up and connected right now. Go ahead and turn on my CGA monitor here. And here's a copy of DOS 2.1 which is paired up with some of the DOS utilities. Be careful with that. Put it in the floppy drive. These are unique floppy drives. I haven't seen a Zenith machine with these before. Those remind me more of Apple Disk 2 style drives than they do PC drives. Here we go. Let's power up. Power switch is on the back, of course. The machine does a quick hardware test. And then it immediately starts loading the operating system. Current date, there is no running clock and calendar in this machine, so I'll have to tell it what that is. I'll bet nobody expected they'd still be anybody interested in using this in the year 2011, but there it goes. And then the current time is, what, about 6 o'clock? Yeah, it's about 6.30. There we are, the IBM Personal Computer DOS. Now we just need an application to run, and I think I've got something interesting that I want to show you. Here's how the disk eject mechanism works. You just press on this thing down here, and the disk shoots back out. We can put it back in the sleeve. Anyway, here's the program I'm going to run, the WordStar Professional Tutor. WordStar was, back in the day, an extremely popular piece of word processing software. In fact, it was pretty much the standard to a lot of people. So let's go ahead and run that tutorial. All right, computer's ready to go here. I've entered the command. Start this thing up. It'll start loading the program from the disk. And behold, color! Glorious CGA graphics. Well, these are just text mode, but still. All right, please type your first name. I'm going to do that. I love this first lesson up here, Fear Not. It has a trademark, so you know it's got to be good. That one's probably fun. Let's go ahead and run it. Psst. Have you got those nasty old computer jitters? Will the machine explode if you press a key? Press any key to find out. You know, I have such fond memories of software like this. Software that didn't take itself too seriously and was a lot of fun to use. Let's just see. Do you suppose the machine will explode if I press a key? <laughs> That's very clever. I love it. That was a myth. Exploding. Not your computer. You can't harm a computer by pressing its keys. 
Your computer is a tool, just like a carpenter's level or a cook's pots and pans. And then, of course, it tells us about some jobs that we can do with our new tool. It says over here in yellow video, I work for you. You pick the job, your computer and WordStar will help you do it. But for right now, I'm going to stop. Turn the computer off because I'm done using it for right now. So we'll go back out to the DOS prompt. We'll eject the disk and shut the computer down.